Ahang Bante Tisaranina Saha Pancha Silani Yachami Dutiampi Ahang Bante Tisaranina Saha Pancha Silani Yachami Tatiampi Ahang Bante Tisaranina Saha Pancha Silani Yachami Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa 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 Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Buddhang saranang gachami. Buddhang saranang gachami. Dhammang saranang gachami. Dhammang saranang gachami. Sanghang Saranang Gachami Sanghang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Ti Saranagamanang Nitintang Ama Bante Parnati Pata Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Pāna tipāta vairamani sikha padang samādhyāmi. Adinna dāna vairamani sikha padang samādhyāmi. Adinna dāna vairamani sikha padang samādhyāmi. Pāmesu michahachāra vairamani sikha padang samādhyāmi. Kami su micha chara, Vairamani sikha padang samadhyami. Musa vada Vairamani sikha padang samadhyami. Musa vada Vairamani sikha padang samadhyami. Ura meraya. Madhapamada Tana Vera Mani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Sura Miraya Madhapamada Tana Vera Mani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Imani Pancha Sikha Padani Silena Sugating Yanti Silena Boga Sampada Sile na nibuting yan ti tasma si lang wisod hayi. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Paragraph 20. 11. In the second tetrad, there is limited concentration with a limited object. There is limited concentration with a measureless object. There is measureless con concentration with a limited object, and there is measureless concentration with a measureless object. Herein, concentration that is unfamiliar and incapable of being a condition for a higher jhana is limited. 
When it occurs with an unextended object, it is with a limited object. When it is familiar, well-developed, and capable of being a condition for a higher jhana, it is measureless. And when it occurs with an extended object, it is with a measureless object. The mixed method can be understood as the mixture of the characteristics already stated. So it is of four kinds as limited with limited object and so on. Bante, what is, what is an extended object or measureless object in this case? We'll get into that when we talk about the casinos. You'll see how you can manipulate them. 21. 12. In the third tetra, the first jhana has five factors. That is to say, applied thought, sustained thought, happiness, bliss, and concentration, following suppression of the hindrances. The second has the three factors remaining after the elimination of applied and sustained thought. The third has two factors with the fading away of happiness. The fourth, where bliss is abandoned, has two factors with concentration and the equanimous feeling that accompanies it. Thus, there are four kinds of concentration according to the factors of these four jhanas. So it is of four kinds according to the factors of the four jhanas. In the fourth tetra, there is concentration partaking of diminution. There is concentration partaking of stagnation. There is concentration partaking of distinction. And there is concentration partaking of penetration. Herein, it should be understood that the state of partaking of diminution is accessibility to opposition. The state of partaking of stagnation, Siti, is stationariness, Santana, of the mindfulness that is in conformity with that concentration. The state of partaking of distinction is the attaining of higher distinction. And the state of partaking of penetration is accessibility to perception and attention, accompanied by dispassion. According as it is said, when a man has attained the first jhana and he is accessible to perception and attention, accompanied by sense desire, then his understanding partakes of diminution. When his mindfulness that is in conformity with that stagnates, then his understanding partakes of stagnation. When he is accessible to perception and attention, unaccompanied by applied thought, then his understanding partakes of distinction. When he is accessible to perception and attention, accompanied by dispassion and directed to fading away, then his understanding partakes of penetration. The kinds of concentration associated with that fourfold understanding are also four in number. So it is of four kinds as partaking of diminution and so on. 23, 14. In the fifth tetra, there are the following four kinds of concentration, that is to say, sensophia concentration, fine material sphere concentration, immaterial sphere con concentration, and an included, that is part concentration. <coughs> Hearing. Sense fear concentration is all kinds of access unification. Likewise, the other three are respectively profitable unification of mind associated with fine material, immaterial, and part jhana. So it is of four kinds as of the sense fear and, and so on. So I want to go back to 22. I don't fully understand this. Um, there's a lot in here. But uh, I think I don't like his translation, which shouldn't be a surprise if you've read it. It's it's very hard to understand, or for me anyway, hard to understand what he's saying. When he is accessible, I don't think it means accessible. That's really weird. Samudha Charanti is like uh, behaves or practices 
frequency. The, the, the translation they give is frequency. And I like that. So that's, I think, what it refers to. So when he frequents the perception and attention that is accompanied by avitaka or is yeah, unaccompanied by vitaka, vitaka being the, the factor of the first jhana. So, yeah. I just try and understand what he's saying here and what this quote is saying, but it's not when he is accessible. It's talking about when he develops. So you're, you're, and this is important because it's a quote about progress, right? So you don't want to stagnate. You certainly want to go backwards. So the diminution means going backwards, I think. Accessibility to opposition. Yeah, not accessibility again. I don't like this word. Yeah, so the when one frequently pays attention to, I guess, or acts, behaves in such a way as the opposites, the opposite of concentration. So I, I assume it means something like when one gives rise to the five hindrances, then of course one's concentration becomes weaker. I think that's all he's saying. It's quite, I think it's pretty simple. Diminution means the opposition, so you, you get caught up in the opposite, doing the opposite of what you should do, basically. Now, as far as stagnation, I, I think this this means that, um, what, suppose you're in the first jhana, if you just keep practicing in such a way that relates to the first jhana, you'll never leave the first jhana, so it stagnates. And I, I'm not even sure that stagnates is the right word. Titi, titi, which means just duration, continuance. I think stagnation is not the right word, again, because it's not that it stagnates, it's just that you don't go anywhere. It's not It's not stagnating, it's just stable. So titi means like continuance, you just stay in the first jhana, so it's not a bad thing. It doesn't stagnate. Uh, I don't think. I may be wrong, but I'm skeptical about that. And then so for distinction is how you get to higher jhanas, by focusing on the vitaka, for example, and, and engaging in... Smuta Charanti is engaging. That would be a good translation, sort of. Engaging in the absence of the factors of the first jhana, which, which leads to their disappearance and the entering into the second jhana and so on. As far as penetration, I think that one is referring to wisdom. So this is concentration that is associated with wisdom because Nibida is... Uh, is one of the vipassana jnanas. I mean, it's a very in integral part of of insight and the practice of vipassana or seeing clearly. And it it won't come, this passion won't come in the practice of samatha. So penetration is momentary concentration based on ultimate reality, would be my guess. The stagnation could be referring to uh, developing the jhana to a higher degree, like, for example, the first jhana can be developed in three degrees, medium degree, excellent. Yeah, I think the idea is it's not being increased in any degree. Maybe, you may be right, but TT just means staying still. I don't yeah, think it's learned, necessarily a bad thing. We we learned it uh, exactly how you said it, Bhante, that uh, someone is uh, just happy with the happy feelings and uh, all that, and they are not willing to abandon the happy sensations right well i mean that's that's again a bit pejorative that you're kind of putting it in a i was just trying to say i'm not sure that it has to be seen in a negative light because the first jhana is is not bad well you can you can look at a person who stays in the first jhana especially if it's a samatha jhana as, as stagnating but i don't think it's the right word it just means they're stuck they're because stagnation some, when something stagnates, doesn't it go bad? No, maybe I'm wrong. What is stagnation? Stagnation oh, okay. it does just mean it does just mean motionless. It's like stuck in place. It's not not getting worse, but not getting better. Just stuck. Okay. So my bad. I I I just took it as a pejorative sort of thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be pejorative. But we would usually we would usually look at it that way. We would say, ah, if you're not improving. But you, but on the other hand, the the Buddha never improved in his jhanas, right? You could just say it's weird for me to hear the word stagnation in terms of the Buddha's practice. 
or even an arahant will enter into cessation and they won't increase. Anyway, it's uh, okay. TT is a very simple word. It means just staying still. Bhante, was, uh, was this paragraph meant to parallel what we saw in chapter one, uh, paragraph 39? It was talking about the same thing, but in terms of virtue instead of concentration. Right. That's right. I, I think so. We might see the same for the wisdom when the wisdom comes up in the third part. So the part where it, uh, the beginning, the very first sentence is, uh, he's accessible to per perception and attention accompanied by sense desire. So this means that he's still distracted by sense desire in, um, in their concentration, basically. Which, which sentence is this? I don't see it. It's the first uh, from the quote. When a man has attained the first jhana, and yeah, but accessible is not the right word. He he practices, or he samudha charanti. Uh, we have this in the Vinaya. Samudha charanti, samudha charanya, samudha charanya. It's just the way you act, or what you do, your behavior, that kind of thing. But uh, I thought this is about concentration. Yeah, so, but when one is in the first jhana and starts to engage with sense desire, it's just a fancy way of saying um, cultivates or, or gives rise to sense desire. Or you could say, Samura Charanti means behaves in such a way that the sanya and manasikara about kama arise or, or associated with kama, just mental states associated with kama, with, with, sensuality arise then there is the sort of degradation of the samadhi it is accessible that's not what samudha charanti means so I, I don't get it 24 15 in the sixth etrad if a bhikkhu obtains concentration obtains unification of mind by making zeal desire predominant this is called concentration due to zeal. If, by making energy predominant, if, by making natural purity of consciousness predominant, if, by making inquiry predominant, this is called concentration due to inquiry. So it is of four kinds as predominance. Those are the four idipada. Con oh, consciousness means uh, consciousness doesn't mean consciousness means uh, attention basically. Jitta means paying, keeping in mind, uh, paying attention, and inquiry means discernment. Vimangsa. These are just the four qualities of success or aspects of the practice. Twenty five sixteen. In the Pentad, there are five jhanas. By dividing in two, what is called the second jhana in the fourfold reckoning, taking the second jhana to be due to the surmounting of only applied thought, and the third jhana to be due to the surmounting of both applied and sustained thought, there are five kinds of concentration according to the factors of these five jhanas, so its fivefoldness should be understood according to the five sets of jhana factors. What is defilement? What is its cleansing? Here the answer is given in the Vivanga. Defilement is the state partaking of diminution. Cleansing is the state partaking of distinction. Herein the state partaking of diminution should be understood in this way. When a man has attained the first jhana, and he is accessible to perception and attention accompanied by sense desire, then his understanding partakes of diminution. And the state partaking of distinction should be understood in this way. When he is accessible to perception and attention unaccompanied by applied thought, then his understanding partakes of distinction. Yeah, so again, is accessible should really be when he cultivates perception and attention accompanied by sense desire and when 
cultivates perception and attention unaccompanied by applied thought. 27. How should it be developed? A. Development in brief. The method of de developing the kind of concentration associated with the noble path mentioned, paragraph 7, under that of two kinds as mundane and supramundane, etc., is included in the method of developing understanding. For in developing path understanding, that is developed too. So we shall say nothing separately here about how that is to be developed. But mundane concentration should be developed by one who has taken his stand on virtue that is quite purified in the way already stated. He should sever any of the ten impediments that he may have. He should then approach the good friend, the giver of a meditation subject, and he should apprehend from among the forty meditation subjects one that suits his own temperament. After that, he should avoid a monastery unfavorable to the development of concentration and go to live in one that is favorable. Then he should sever the lesser impediments and not overlook any of the directions for development. This is in brief. B. Development in detail. 29. The detail is this. The ten impediments. Firstly, it was said above, he should sever any of the ten impediments that impediments that he may have. Now the ten impediments are a dwelling, family, and gain, a class and building two as fifth, and travel, kin, affliction, books, and supernormal powers. Ten. Herein, the dwelling itself is the impediment due to the dwelling, so too with the family, and so on. One. Herein, a single inner room, or a single hut, or a whole monastery for the community is called a dwelling. This is not an impediment for everyone. It is an impediment only for anyone whose mind is exercised about the building, etc., that goes on there, or who has many belongings stored there, or whose mind is caught up by some business connected with it. For any other, it is not an impediment. Here is a relevant story. Two clansmen left Anuradha Pura, it seems, and eventually went forth at the Tuparama. One of them made himself familiar with the two codes, and when he had acquired five years' seniority, he took part in the pa Pawarana and then left for the place called Pachinakadaraji. The other stayed on where he was. Now when the one who had gone to Pachinakadaraji had lived there a long time and had become an, eld an elder, he thought, this place is good for retreat. Suppose I told my friend about it. So he set out, and in the due course he entered the Turaparama. As he entered, the elder of the same seniority saw him, went to meet him, took his bowl and robe, and did, did the duties. The messenger went into his lodging. He thought, now my friend will be sending me ghee or molasses, molasses or a drink, for he has lived long in this city. He got nothing that night, and in the morning he thought, now he will be sending me nice gruel and solid food sent by his supporters. When he saw none, he thought, there is no one to bring it. No doubt they will give it when we go into town. Early in the morning, they went into, town, went, went into the town together. 
when they had wandered through one street and had got only little full of gruel they sat down in a sitting hall to drink it then the visitor thought perhaps there is no individual giving of gruel but as soon as it is the time for the meal people will give special food but uh, when it was time for the meal they ate what they had got by wandering for arms then the visitor said merhaba sir how is this do you live in this way all the time yes friend merhaba sir patna kandaraj is comfortable let us go there now as the elder came out from the city by the southern gate he took the kumbakara gram road which leads to patna kandaraj the visitors the visitor asked but venerable sir why do you take this road did you not recommend patna kandaraj friend but how is this venerable sir have you not extra belongings in the place you have lived in for so long that is so friend the bed and chair belong to the community and they are put away as usual there is nothing else but venerable sir i have left my staff and my oil tube and my sandal bag there have you already collected so much living there for just one day yes venerable sir he was glad in his heart and he paid homage to the elder for those like you venerable sir everywhere is a forest dwelling the tuparama is a place where the relics of four buddhas are deposited there is suitable hearing of the dhamma in the brazen palace there is the great shrine to be seen and one can visit elders it is like the time of the buddha it is here that you should live on the following day he took his bowl and outer robe and went away by himself it is no impediment for one like that so um i mean i think it's pretty clear this one but um just as a summary it's that for ordinary people staying in one place for a long time you get a lot of distractions you start to make acquaintances and uh, you of course as he says you collect belongings and these become an impediment something that you have to concern yourself with you have you you're something that you're constantly thinking about but it was remarkable that this man had lived in this monk had lived in this place for so long and he 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 could just he didn't even have to go back to his room he could just leave if when it was time to go somewhere else he just packed up and leave that he had no attachment to his dwelling he didn't have to go and say goodbye or take leave of anyone or had no belongings he didn't even have these few things that this other monk had being there only one day he didn't keep any belongings so the the idea is to take leave of all these things for ordinary people you would take leave of your house and this going away to a meditation center is valuable for this because it it takes you away from all of these things now before you go away you of course have to settle all your affairs and this is one of the affairs that you have to settle you have to settle your dwelling place make sure that when you go away to practice that you're not thinking about it i mean ideally you don't have a place you sell it and you get rid of all your belongings and you go and become a monk in a monastery but if you still have these things you better be sure that there's nothing that you have to be concerned with during your course otherwise it will be a distraction oh did i leave the lights on did i leave the you know this kind of thing but it's interesting how um the other monk had no clue of uh, how a steer he could live actually because where he was staying he had everything and gathering a lot of things no well not necessarily he was just expecting um or the the things he talks about are pretty ordinary even the belongings that he has are not anything extravagant but uh, it was just impressive that this other monk uh, was was incredibly austere too family means a family consisting of relatives or of supporters 
For even a family consisting of supporters is an impediment for someone who lives in close association with it in the way beginning. He is pleased when they are pleased. And if who does not even go to a neighboring monastery to hear the Dhamma without members of the family? Yeah, this is a big one for monks. Uh, I mean, for, you can extrapolate this for, for non-monastics, of course. Relatives and friends are a real distraction. We've had many cases of friends trying to contact meditators. We've had multiple cases in over the years of relatives or, or partners trying to contact the meditator and, and refusing to let them talk to them and them just getting very upset. We had someone who was in the very end of their course, or more than one person, very end of their course, and at the end you don't, you, you really can't have any kind of disturbance, and uh, got into a bit of a bit of an argument. I mean, they were they were they weren't happy to not be allowed to contact their the, the, the meditators and so on. So yeah, this can be an impediment. You have to sever. Make it clear to people that when you go away to do meditation, they are not going to be able to contact you, and they shouldn't expect to, even if someone is dying or there's war and famine, and even if there's even if the world is exploding. Those are classic examples of uh, also know that Mara influences these relatives to somehow right. uh, be an obstacle. Yeah, it certainly happens. Even mother and father are not an impediment for another, as in the case of the young bhikkhu, the nephew of the elder who lived at the Koran Dhaka monastery. He went to Rahana for instruction, it seems. The elder sister, who was a lay devotee, was always asking the elder how her son was getting on. One day, the elder set out for Rohana to fetch him back. The young bhikkhu, too, thought, I have lived here for a long time. Now I might go and visit my preceptor and find out how the lay devotee is. And he left Rohana. The two met on the banks of the river. He did the duties to the elder at the foot of a tree. When asked, where are you going? He told him his purpose. The elder said, You have done well. The lay devotee is always asking for you. That is why I came. You may go, but I shall stay here for the rains. <clears throat> and he dismissed him. He arrived at the monastery on the actual day for taking up residence for the rains. The lodging allotted to him happened to be the one for which his father had undertaken responsibility. There's um, there's syntactic ambiguity here. I think syntactic. There's ambiguity here. He arrived at the monastery. He's talking about the son, the the the, 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 the student. He arrived at the monastery of the place where his family lived. So what happened is this this boy became a monk, right? And his right his uncle was the is the elder monk. And so his his uncle lives in the monastery where where his family, where his sister lives, where the the kid's mother lives, and then the the son, the monk, young monk, goes away. Then the elder goes to to find him, and he at the same time goes to see the elder, and they meet halfway. And the son continues on and is now staying where the the, the mother, where his mother lives. They don't recognize him, as you'll see in the next um, in the next paragraph. 38. His father came on the following day and asked, To whom was our lodging allotted, venerable sirs? When he heard that it had fallen to a young visitor, he went to him. After paying homage to him, he said, Venerable sir, there is an obligation for him who has taken up residence for the rains and our lodging. What is it, lay follower? It is to take alms food only in our house for the three months and to let us know the time of departure after the Pawarana ceremony. He consented in silence. The lay devotee went home and told his wife. 
there is a visiting lord who has taken up residence for the rains in our lodging. He must be carefully looked after. And she agreed. She prepared good food of various kinds for him. Though the youth went to his relative's home at the time of the meal, no one recognized him. What could be the reason that they didn't recognize him? I don't know. I've always thought that's weird. I think it's just a long time past. Doesn't seem like a long time past. Huh? When he had eaten alms food there during the three months and had completed the residence for the rains, he announced his departure. Then his relative said, Let it be tomorrow, venerable sir. And on the following day, when they had fed him in their house and filled his oil tube, and given him a lump of sugar and nine cubit length of cloth. They said, Now you are leaving, Venerable. Sir, he gave his blessing and set out for Rohan. What is the oil tube? So oil is what they use to, um, well, to prevent cracking in the skin. Like you put it on your feet because you're always walking around barefoot uh, so that your feet don't crack and bleed. Yeah, you also put oil on the head and on the limbs, and it, uh, it prevents the cracking of the skin to moisturize. What about the sugar? Well, you can eat the sugar. To gain energy, or? Yeah. Maybe it's jaggery, I don't know. Probably jaggery. Yeah, it's jaggery, not sugar. Basically sugar. In India and well, in Sri Lanka, still they have lumps of molassesy sugar. I guess it is. I don't really know what it is, but just lumps of sugar sweet with their tea, and also with they eat it with rice, right? Anyway, it's a big. It's a very very common thing to just chew on. We are talking about uh, sukiri bande. That is uh, like sugar. Not tough sugar. No, jaggery. So jaggery. Uh, jaggery is basically sugar. What is jaggery made of? Jaggery is made out of the honey of the uh, palmyra tree. The uh, so not sugar cane, right? From the... Still mostly sugar. No. Yeah, it's sweet. Gula pinda. A lump of molasses, maybe. It's not gu It's not sugar, is it? Sugar. Gula. Gula sugar. I don't know the word for sugar. Maybe gula is sugar. Forty. His preceptor had completed the Pavarana ceremony and was on his way back. They met at the same place as before. He did the duties to the elder at the foot of a tree. The elder asked him, How was it, my dear? Did you see the good woman lay devotee? He replied, Yes, Venerable Sir. And he told him all that had happened. He then anointed the elder's feet with the oil, made him a drink with the sugar, and presented him with a length of cloth. He then, after paying homage to the elder, told him, Venerable Sir, only Rohana suits me. And he departed. The elder too arrived back at his monastery the next day and went into the village of Okay, I was looking for the word deer. It's, it's a little bit odd, and I was curious to see. And there's an interesting word that he uses. Uh, he doesn't use the word deer, the word for deer at all. Badamuka. Badamuka means one whose face is auspicious. Badamuka is a compliment, a term of endearment. Kind of like honey, actually, sort of. Well, not really, but a bit like honey in that we call someone honey because of how sweet they are, how honey is such a great thing. Do we have something like bada muka? Muka means face, bada. It's great to see you. We call someone bada muka, it means someone who it's so great to see. Someone whose face it is great to see. An auspicious face. 
The lady devotee, his sister, had always kept looking down the road, thinking, My brother is now coming with my son. When he saw him coming alone, she thought, My son must be dead, and that is why the elder is coming alone. And she fell at the elder's feet, lamenting and weeping. Suspecting that it must have been out of fewness of wishes that the youth had gone away without announcing himself, the elder comforted her and told her all that had happened. And he took the length of cloth out of his bag and showed it to her. So he, she expects the son to come back with the elder, right? The elder was going to get the son, find out how he is and bring him back. Comes back without him, she thinks he must be dead. But the son has just refused to come back. He's not interested. And the elder realized that she didn't even know that he was staying the whole of the reins. He had already come back and he was staying the whole of the reins with her, with their family. And he takes out the the cloth because the, the young monk had given the cloth to the elder. She had given the cloth, or her family had given the cloth to the son as a, as a going away gift. And when he sees the elder, he gives it as a gift to his to the elder. And the elder shows her the cloth and says, this was given by your son that you gave to him. She was appeased. She prostrated herself in the direction taken by her son. And she said, surely the blessed one taught the way of the Ratha Venita, the way of the Noaka, the way of the Tuvataka, and the way of the great noble one's heritages. Showing contentment with the four requisites in delight and development, making a bhikkhu, such as my son, a body witness, so although for three months he ate in the house of the mother who bore him, he never said, I am your son, you are my mother. Oh, admirable man, even mother and father are no impediment for one such as him. So how much less any other family that supports him? A special story that I always remember. It's also like very wise from the from the mother that she reacted this way to what what happened with the son. No, like it's very admire admirable. Yeah. yeah. Normally, not that. Normally, that wouldn't be the response. Exactly. Is it is it common to? Um, I mean, maybe in the past it was that one family would take care of one monk, so there they would invite the monk uh, to eat at their house uh, the whole time, the rains retreat. No, I mean there's different different traditions that have come and gone. Different con- different Buddhist cultures have different traditions and. And not just that, but in different places, they'll, they people will make promises or or, or um, contracts with the monks, telling them what they you know, they'll promise this or promise that. I just checked the meaning of the word "bhagavan" in the Singhala dictionary. I couldn't find the the two words together, but uh, "bhadra" means. Uh, Good, proper, or beautiful, or great, or good. That's where you get the word bante from. Yeah. Bante is a contraction of badanta, badanta, one who has, one who has bada. You know, there's bada kappa. This is a bada kappa that we live in. Bada is a common adjective meaning special. Not exactly special, but uh, yeah, I guess special, exceptional, extraordinary. Badamuka. I've never heard it. People call people would call their dear ones badamuka, good face, special face. It's like in English, we say dear heart. Well, it's not exactly, but it's it's, it's that kind of thing where we call someone dear heart. But that's more you're dear to my heart, I guess. One one seeing the face of whom is auspicious. One who has a face, the seeing of which is auspicious, especially. Madra is uh, the word for honey, like for a beautiful girl. Well, Badra is Sanskrit. I don't think mm. 
I, I, we don't usually use Bhadra for in Pali. It's Bhadda. Two Ds. Bhadda. Yeah. Bhadra is a common uh, Sinhalese name for women. I think I know more than one yeah. Bhadra. There's also Bhadrasana, which means the throne. Uh -huh. The special seat. Yeah. Not exactly, yeah, special mean Baddha is like high, exalted. So the stories that we just read are related to mundane concentration, right? We're not talking about concentration at the moment. And we won't be talking about concentration for quite a while, for for a while anyway. What we're talking about is what you have to do before you develop concentration. This is very. This is the practical portion. Right. It's a very important part of the book, practically speaking. I mean, there's nothing deep about it, but it's very um, insightful in terms of its description of what you should do, practically speaking. And the first thing, before anything else, get rid of the ten impediments. These are just practical concerns. Awaso chakulang labo kano kamanchapanchamang Memorize that. Memorize the Pali. It's a very good appreciation of why it's so difficult in uh, daily life as compared to monastic life to develop in concentration and meditation in general. Yeah, these things are an impediment. Not a problem for vipassana practitioners. Right. That's a good point, honestly. But they would still they still are, because this isn't talking about things you can't have though for samatha you really shouldn't you, you really can't but this is talking about things that disturb your mind they nag at you they 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 they, they, they you they worry you and that will affect vipassana as well with samatha there's so many things you can't have if you're really intent on samatha you really need like quiet and solitude and good food that sort of thing and then you need well we'll see when we get into samatha what you need you need to pick the right exert the right practice the right uh, object for your temperament samatha is a bit finicky um would someone be able to determine their own temperament or uh, it should be determined from by a teacher I mean, as with any question like that, it's it's not the best. It's not ideal. Here they're mm -hmm. telling you what you should do. Um, you know, all of this is precluded on the fact that you're going to find a teacher, which is not just the better way. It's really night and day different from trying to practice without a teacher. So, yeah, we find ourselves often without a teacher, and that's unfortunate, and so we have to ask these questions. But... I mean, the answer really is just, well, it's not ideal, but you can try. I mean, you should never have to figure out your own temperament. Or on the other hand, you, it, it's going to be hard for the teacher who doesn't know you to figure out your temperament as well. That's why the, it goes into some detail about how a teacher should go about discerning the, the temperament of the student. Well, it takes time, really, and living together, I guess. That. So that would, that's ideal, yeah. But it gives some some shortcuts. Some of them are kind of funny. Murda asks, the temperament of a student does not matter so much in this practice, correct? It's only very important in samatha, right? Well, let me. I'll talk about it when we get to it. But basically, there's a different. So different um, enumeration of temperaments for vipassana practice, simpler, and it doesn't really matter that much. 
teaching vipassana is a bit of a well teaching any meditation is an art but it's a different art from teaching samatha i suppose because of how because of how you're dealing with the meditators you're dealing with their idiosyncrasies in samatha you're you're pretty it should be pretty uniform because you're you're repressing or ignoring or avoiding preventing the arising of the person's temperament their personality as best you can so the you know for the character character type you find ways to just sort of suppress their character to allow them to enter into the jhanas with the vipassana you don't do that so every interaction with this, with with individual students is different quite interesting being a teacher and facing so many different types of student most of them would like to be practicing samatha much more a lot of what we do is helping people understand the limitations of samatha and helping them to let go of pleasant experiences or let go of their desire for pleasant experiences and their aversion to unpleasant uncomfortable experiences just helping them to understand to be more open and independent of the experience so rather than pegging someone as this temperament or that temperament you you really have to take people as they are and you have to give them what they need going to be different a little bit different for everyone but on the other hand a lot of it is is uh, impressing upon them how banal and mundane their experience is and so there isn't that much diversity it's not like you teach different techniques so much to uh, to different people you're mostly trying to impress upon them how uninteresting everything is how everything is just ordinary arising and ceasing so you it is in in one sense you're really ignoring people's temperament no matter what a person experiences ideally you're you're helping them to realize the uh, the unexceptional nature of it but uh, in uh, terms of um seeing reality as it is and uh, right i mean everyone seeing basically the same thing about reality and realizing the insights or has to be the same so i agree i mean I just I thought that temperament would still matter uh, in their like environment for example like if an angry temperament has like a very bad environment to practice in uh it it would be much harder for example to also progress on with the insights no mm. not not so much we do have uh, protective meditations uh to complement the insight meditation so those can be had did you say protective yeah protective meditations metta buddhana sati bante do you still have lots of students every two weeks it's actually slowing down so i think i have maybe 20 now as a guess maybe a little more it's it's going very quickly because we have we have a record number of people in determination the past few days we ran out of sheets uh, like um they give these sheets uh, of laminated paper with the exercises in them and we ran out the chinese ones and the english i think we more chinese people than english than non chinese chinese is the majority but uh, right now we have a record number of people in determination and they're they're just ending so they'll be leaving in the next day or so our next group is coming on the 7th so in the next four days five days i have I'm less busy with that but i'm doing the patimoka on thursday so sort of the crunch to I, i spend a little i focus a little more on that in the days going up to it 
The race didn't start yet, right? No, that's not until next month. I think it's July 20th, yeah. July 1st, I will have been a monk longer than I'm, than not a monk. July 1st is the day, apparently. So I'm still thinking of maybe doing something. It's, a, it's something that only happens once in your life. This is one, one occasion that is never going to happen again. I guess unless I were to disrobe. No, that, then I didn't think then it would happen. Then I'd have to be 90 before it happened again. So maybe I'll do something special. What would qualify as special for, for such a thing, such an occasion? Well, because it's a monastic thing, I might just give robes to a bunch of monks. Do you know how many monks are at the monastery oh. in Tontrampoing? I think 60 or so. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Sad. Thank, Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Sadhu. 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 Thank you, Edit. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, a good week. <laughs>